If you take that water bottle and we're in we're in outer space and I have to throw the water in the air, the water's just gonna flow, flow in the air. So and the only thing you can do is take a suck um straw and suck it. Suck exactly. It. Or you can what? You can throw it in the air and then just go and act like a like a fish or something and just go eat it out of the air. <laughs> but what we're looking at here is gravity. Gravity keeps all this together. Now, oh my. it says, look what it says. It says, over 300 years ago, this guy, his name is Sir Isaac Newton, described an invisible force holding the sun and the planet together. He called the invisible force what? Gravity. He described gravity as a property of all matter. It is a force of attraction or pull between any object and any objects around it. Now, remember what we were saying. What's keeping these planets in alignment is the force that exists between them. Okay, because each of them rotates in its own way. Looks but, like a rainbow. Well, it looks like a cool rainbow. But what we're saying is, each one of the planets has their own what? Their own well, orbit. Orbit, right? Wait, also about Neptune and Pluto and Uranus, don't they? Um, I think um, Neptune and Uranus, Neptune goes in circle and Neptune goes and crosses. Um, That's know, right. Universe. Now, the main thing is, everybody's orbit is unique to their own. So, for example, if Mars is going this way, let's say there's the planet, and Venus is going that way, they never bump into each other. Now, how, how that's possible, I can't tell you, but what we do know is that gravity and their orbit has a lot to do with it. I think I, it's because uh, the planets are closer, the gravity is stronger, but probably the farther Venus than to Pluto, they probably lose the gravity and momentary. Yeah, so think about it. Out here, <laughs> Obviously, the gravitational pulls are going to be a lot weaker than it's going to be here. But when we're looking at what Isaac Newton said, Isaac Newton says what? Gravity depends on two measurements, mass and distance. So mass, okay, plus distance. All right, so when you add these two together, what you have is gravity. So it says, he goes on to say, gravity depends on two measurements, mass and distance. The more matter or mass in an object, the greater the pull in the object's direction. The closer the two objects are, the stronger the pull of gravity between them. So he's right. If a planet is all the way over here, the gravity or the gravitational force is going to be stronger or weaker? Weaker. Weaker. If it's right here, it's going to be very intense, very strong. Okay, yeah. So basically, if the sun was like go pop, so the farthest planet to uh, right will just fall first? Sure. Now, who's the biggest planet in the solar system? Uh, biggest? Jupiter. Jupiter. Or Saturn. What's the biggest Sun. one? Sun. 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 Sun is not a planet. Exactly right. What, what is the sun? Stars. 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 The sun is a planet, but it's really a, a star. star. So it's very good. It's a tricky question. Know. Now it goes on to say, look, here's the other thing. Here's another word. It's called inertia. Oh my God, I know what that is. You know what that is? What is it? The planets stay in their orbits. So gravity is not the only reason they stay put. It says gravity alone would pull the planets into the sun. So technically, if it's just having to do with gravity, all these planets would be pulled right into the sun, right? Oh. Okay, and why is that? Because the sun, the sun has what the largest gravitational force. It says also, this. That would probably happen when the, the sun is born, because uh, when the sun is about to born, it takes all those you know clouds in like. That's also true. What do you got? Can there be too much gravity or too little gravity? Yeah. Too much gravity yeah. or heavier and than 1,000 that, million pounds. Exactly, yeah. There could be too much gravity or too little. That's what yeah. this whole concept yeah. is. Yeah. Too much gravity uh, makes sense. That 2012 thing, the idea is when you have all these planets that actually line up in a straight line, that's what 2012 is. The idea is when all the planets line up in a straight line, there's so much gravity and so much gravitational pull that it causes what? Destruction. So in that sense, here, yeah, there has to be a reason why the, some planets are here, some planets are here, 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 here. But that only probably happens like once, once, uh, once like in a trillion, trillion years. years. Right, so think about it like that. Yeah. Did it ever happen before? Yeah, it, sometimes. There, there was a time, well, there was a couple of different times, right? So you guys study science, right? Yeah. So you study, you learned about dinosaurs, right? Yeah. So when you talk about dinosaurs, what do they say was one of the reasons why the dinosaurs became extinct? Because uh, the planets yeah. lined up. Because maybe the planets lined up, there's another Big Bang Theory where what? A I'm meteorite, like, yeah, meteorite came. All right, so there's a variety of different things. But as far as we know, 
on record. There's never been a time where all the planets have lined up like this. So now this is why it's such a scary possibility because we don't know, like she was saying, with all this gravity having too much, what, what it can do. All right, so now you got to stay tuned. Yeah. Um, if that does happen, is there any survive? Is there any possible way to survive? There might be a possibility. I don't know. They'll probably make precautions. Maybe they'll, like you see, he said in the movie, like they built like this big, sh big Daddy. ship. Uh, maybe it'll go on top of a mountain. I don't know. But when this kind of gravitational force, um, it's hard to predict. Yeah, what's going on? Um, on the one on the movie 2012, when all the planets, it said all the planets lined up, the Earth planet just turned and turned, so all the water would flood the United States, no, it would flood, flood half of the United States on, on the eastern side, and well, what the controls, eastern side would just like crumble up to dust. Right, but let me ask you a question, what controls the ocean on the Earth? What? Nothing. Nothing. Uh, so wind and heat. What controls the ocean or the water on the Earth? Heat. Not heat. Gravity. Uh, What's no, it? the moon's um the moon. Yeah, yeah so the moon. Else? Okay, so for example, the moon definitely controls the waters what ebb and flow. The idea is high tide and low tide is controlled by the moon, the gravitational force of the moon. Now, what he's saying is true. Depending on the gravitational force, you may or may not have a lot of flooding, but it's hard to predict what precautions to take. But we're looking at when it says inertia, it says look, it said that doesn't happen because all the planets are moving. All objects, including the planets, have what? a property called inertia. Inertia is the tendency of a moving object to keep moving in a straight line. So think about it. If it was just up to gravity, all these planets would bump into each other. They would intersect. But because they have inertia, they stay on their line. Okay? On their they own don't. line. Now, a better question is this. You guys are talking about how is it possible for them all to intersect, right? Well, if they didn't have inertia, would it ever be possible for them to get in a straight line? No. No, the only reason that they're going to get in a straight line on 12, 21, 12 is because they have inertia. So after so many rotations around the sun, they finally get to the point where they're all aligned. Cool. Okay, and that's the cool thing about it. Now, whether or not, like I said, how much time do we have left until 20, 12, 21, 12? Nothing. Well, what month is this? February. 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 March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October. So we have around so 10 months. months. Ten. Ten. Ten months. So start, you know, start Tag making arrangements. Start okay. Okay. No, it's only a false. Huh? They said it's only the world's going to end at 2030. Well, guess, well, guess what will they say again? 2,000, 2,130? I mean, there's a, lot of, years. there's a lot of predictions oh, out there. Left but left this left. one, what makes this one so interesting is because the Mayans, with their calendar, have never been wrong.